Hello and welcome to the Adafruit CircuitPython Weekly for September 17th, 2018. This is our one year anniversary uh, on recording the Adafruit uh, CircuitPython Weekly. There may have been one or two before we recorded it, but this is the first one uh, or a year from <laughs> the first one. Uh, I believe it was September 18th last year. So I guess we're uh, a day off, but you know, whatever. Um, if you want to join us, this uh, meeting happens every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern here on our Adafruit Discord voice channel. Um, to join that, you can go to the, go to the URL adafru.it slash discord. Um, if you can't make it, um, f please join the Discord anyway. We have a text channel that uh, people chat in all week long, which is super fun. Um, and we're usually there. And also, if you can't make it, uh, you may have found these recordings already, uh, which are available on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit. Look for the CircuitPython weekly playlist, and you'll be able, be able to listen to this one and all of the previous ones as well, uh, which is awesome. Um, the meeting uh, is pretty structured, uh, so we do it in four parts. Um, the first part is a state of CircuitPython, just a kind of a numbers overview of how the project as a whole is going. Uh, after that, we'll do hug reports, which is a chance for everybody to say thank you to other folks for the work that they've been doing uh, since they've had a chance to say that last. So uh, for most of us who attend every week, it's kind of what's been happening in the last week. Um, and we do that as a round robin. So I will start and then we'll go down the list of uh, people in the voice chat. Uh, if you're lurking and don't want to participate in these round robins, uh, just let us know and we'll we'll skip you. That's totally, totally OK. Um, after hug reports, we do status updates, which is a very software engineering sort of thing uh, where you talk about what you've been working on and what you plan on working on in the upcoming week. It's a way to get everybody on the same page and also provide potential like trip tips, tricks and hints to uh, other people on based on what they're working on. Um, so that's the third section. And the fourth section is kind of what we consider discussion slash in the weeds section, uh, which is just whatever we wanted to talk about um, and didn't have a chance to before. It might be longer longer discussion or questions or whatever. And uh, the way that works is that if you have a topic that you want to talk about, um, just pop it into the text chat, either before that section entirely or while we're dis discussing something else. Um, it's just to avoid long pauses of me waiting for some something to be brought up. So uh, that's how we'll do that. And that's the last section. Uh, you may notice that I... Uh, have pauses and, and kind of lose my train of thought, that's because I'm taking time codes. Uh, so every meeting we do take notes as well. And uh, we've had a, f a number of volunteers, uh, primarily Katni, who helps with the notes. So um, if you miss something or want to go back and look at it, just check the, the video on YouTube it has a link to the notes doc as well. Um, all right, uh, with that, let's go get going. I'll take a time code and start us off. Um, we start with state of CircuitPython, and this is a, kind of a numbers look at the project as a whole. This is broader than just uh, the CircuitPython repository. This includes, um, <laughs> uh, this includes both the core repo and the libraries and the newsletter as well. So um, we've had, in the last week, I pulled these numbers last night, uh, we had 21 pull requests merged from nine different authors. Um, new names in this list that I don't recognize uh, is there's one, which is Aaron DeWint, uh, which is awesome. Always happy to have new people. And uh, those not or those 21 pull requests were were reviewed by four different reviewers. So thank you, reviewers. And uh, as always, reviewing is a great way to get started. Um, if you're interested in participating, just take a look at code. If it has to do with a particular driver um, and you have that, you can also test it as well. Um, so that leaves 17 open pull requests. Um, so if you're curious what those 17 are, uh, f feel free to check the notes. Um, they're all listed there. Uh, issues wise, we had 12 closed issues by six people and 10 opened by five people. So. Uh, this is pretty good. Uh, in the last few weeks, we've kind of been net positive just by a few. And this week, we're net negative by a couple, which is great. Um, we have 148 uh, total open issues. And uh, again, the, those are listed in the docs. We won't fully cover them. 
Um, downloads wise on on Circuit Python, we Dan released uh, 302, I believe, on Friday. So we've had 304 total downloads since then, which it to me is pretty typical of our like four to five hundred downloads a week, uh, because that's a short period uh, and it's over a weekend. So um, that's all good. Pretty pretty standard trends on terms of which boards are being downloaded. And again, check the notes for more details on that. Um, we've got some driver related checks that are also pasted into the note stocks, but uh, I won't go through all those. There's a lot of kind of noise from new repos that we just haven't set up yet. So uh, if you're one of those people that works on that, uh, please check that out. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the last part of the section is I give just a few sentences of where I think the project is. Um, first and foremost, uh, it's really good that we're getting these uh, incremental fixes uh, onto th the 3x kind of series of stable releases. 302 is actually really good. Uh, Dan fixed a bunch of stuff before getting that out. So recommend anybody who's using that stable line to switch to 302. Uh, lots of good stuff there. And then um, we're getting super close to doing a 4.0 alpha. We're going to want it for the Halloween because of the display work uh, that we've been doing. So expect to see that too. And once we're in that um, kind of first alpha phase, uh, we'll do kind of what we did with 3x, where the alpha phase is all about um, fleshing out the existing APIs we have for CircuitPython. And then the beta phase is adding any of the extra stuff that we want to add for uh, BLE in particular. And then the last phase is the re release candidate phase where theoretically we have everything checked in. We just want to let it um, find any issue, find and fix any issues before we go stable. So um, we'll begin that process shortly when we do our first alpha release. So uh, that should be exciting. Um, okay, let's move on to hug reports. I'll take a time code. Um, so uh, Hug Reports is a chance for everybody to say thank you to others for the work that they've been doing. Um, it kind of serves two purposes. First, it's great to say thank you for people that, that and the work that they do. But also, uh, we do it in a public way, which means that we all kind of understand the things that we all value that other people do. So it's a great way to build um, a, a shared understanding of what we value within within our community. So uh, I'll start. Um, First and foremost, I want to say, actually, let me take the time code. <laughs> I warned you, warned you up front that I would do this. Um, first and foremost, uh, I'll do these in reverse orders from the notes, but um, everyone, uh, thank you for attending. Uh, this is has been a one year of weekly meetings, and it's been a, a huge, huge success. Um, the origin story, I don't know how much we've talked about this, but Katni is really one of the reasons that we have this weekly meeting because Dan and I were chatting in a voice channel at one point and she asked to join and said like, Oh, that would be good for this to happen. Um, and, and so Katni, Katni is also the, the originator of the code plus community idea as well. So I think that she deserves a lot of credit for, credit for that. Um, but then again, uh, everybody else is also uh, thank you for making the weeklies a big, a big group and community event every week, uh, which is great. And um, that includes the people that are not listed in the in the voice chat here. I know that there's people that do listen to this after the fact because some of them have responded to calls like, uh, let's get translations going and stuff like that. So um, thank you to everybody who pays attention to this and watches it on YouTube, um, that sort of thing. So uh, that's the first big thank you. And then I have two kind of more concise ones. Uh, first, I mentioned earlier Aaron DeWint uh, what, did a first PR, uh, and they fixed uh, something with the LSM 9DS uh, uh, library. So thank you, thank you to Aaron for that. And then I also wanted to shout out to AT Makers for their first PR on CircuitPython. Um, Bill of AT Makers has been uh, picking up CircuitPython as a way to make it easier for. Um, uh, assistive tech to help people more easily, which is great. So uh, those are, are my hug reports. Um, let's move on to Carter. Okay. Group hug as always, of course. And and then a whole smattering of uh, small ones. Uh, Summersoft for a bunch of quick reviews and merges you did on HT16K33 stuff. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Lady Ada, a big one for testing and merging the PN532 stuff, the, which is the um, RFC card stuff. Yep. Uh, and one for you, Scott, for some merges you did on the LSM 9, DSO 0, and 1. Hmm. Uh, those quick little merges. Yep. And Jerry N this weekend for some stuff I was posting, he was commenting on uh, relative to the TCS 34725 uh, RGB color sensor thing. Mm -hmm. So basically just lots of people keeping up the good good vibe. Awesome. Well, thank you, Carter. And, and thank you for all the, the uh, review changes that you did too. That's been great. Um, all right, C. Grover. Yeah, group hug to the entire team. Um, I've been working on other projects, non circuit Python related for a while, but I've been lurking in discord and I'm, I'm still impressed by the rate of the progress, both for fixes and for new features. So great job. Totally. And if, if anybody wants, uh, to see how that's gone, go back and listen to the first recorded circuit Python weekly. Um, <laughs> I started listening to it last night and it was, it's like us talking about three O and yeah, it's, it's really interesting to just get that comparison of what a year has done. Um, so yeah, I posted the link to that last night if you want to find it. It's also on the YouTube playlist. Um, okay, Charles. I just have a general uh, group hug for everybody because uh, uh, I've been listening to this and I've been absorbing a lot of useful information. So thank you very much for all of you. And I've all... And one to Katni for all of the uh, thing things she does in the uh, learn learn uh, area. Yep, totally. Thank you. Thanks, Charles. Glad your mic's working this week. Yes, uh, but, uh, I also I also have a, a something to say about a project I'm working on. I need I'm going to need a little help soon. Okay. Well, we're here. Um, I don't know. You can let us know about that more in status updates. Yes, man. Yes, sir. Cool. Um, okay, Dakota is lurking, so we'll go to Dan. Um, <clears throat> thanks for the people who helped with it, contributed to the 3.02 release, um, especially Jerry and Paul Kierstad from um, a couple of weeks ago, and also um, Lady Ada, who had some last-minute UR changes that are really useful mm -hmm. for everybody. And then also thanks a group hug to everybody for the community for the past year, which has really been marvelous. I was just, I'm in the airport right now coming back and seeing my parents and I was just explaining to them about code plus community and things like that. And it was, it was a pleasure to talk about that. Awesome. Okay. Thanks Dan. Uh, Deshipu. Okay. So thank you Dan for the fix for PWM. That's really important for my robots. That will come in handy. Uh, thank you, Arturo, for, for all the work on NRF52. That chip is looking really great for, for future projects. And thank you to Scott uh, for working, continuing to work on the uh, game API. I've been uh, advertising it a little bit. Uh, so, so there are some new people probably going to, to join and uh, at least look, look at it. Mm -hmm. I hope you don't mind. And that's it. Thank you. Awesome. And uh, I'll be in New York. Well, a lot of us will be in New York at the end of the week. And Lamar did mention wanting to work more on the gaming hardware, which is very exciting. Um, so we're still working on it. All right, Jerry. Yeah, uh, again, a group hug. Congratulations on, on a year. And, uh, and a special shout out to Dan for all the all the work on the NRF 52, especially the dongle this last week and, uh, and getting 302 out. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Um, and you, you've been one of those people for the whole year, I think basically as well. So thank, thank you for that. Um, Katni. Yeah. Hi. Welcome back. So uh, thank you. I have a group hug for everyone who has been keeping everything amazing while I was gone. Um, it's super great to go away for so long and come back and everything in the community is great. There's been, you know, all the things that needed to be dealt with have been dealt with. Um, it's it's nice to know that everyone steps up um, to fill in for the things that I or we normally do mm -hmm. um, when we're gone. 
I have a hug for Scott and Dan for all the support before my trip, uh, helping me get everything set to go so I could leave and um, taking care of all the stuff that needed to happen for the New York trip uh, while I was gone. So I didn't have to worry about that. Um, thank you, Scott, for taking care of the newsletter. Uh, the updated guides is something I usually do um, every week, and you got that taken care of for me. Mm -hmm. And thanks to Mike Barella for taking care of all the blog posts for the PyPI work. Those, po those posts are huge and very mm -hmm. involved, um, and there were many of them, and uh, Mike got all those taken care of for me. So thank you very much for that. And um, thanks, everyone, for making this such an amazing year. Um, having started not long before that, uh, I, I have a very solid view of exactly how things went from beginning to now. Um, and it's been an amazing ride. Um, so thank you everyone for being a part of that, for making this what it is. Um, it's been great. Yay. All right. Mike is lurking. So we'll go to Scott SDW. Scott said, or let me take a fan code before I read. Um, Scott says, group hug and kudos to the teams developing the web-based editors for the microbit for the new web USB support. Okay, and now for Sedacious and another time code. Sedacious says, to Katni and Scott for going the extra mile for making the CircuitPython community especially welcoming and encouraging me to remain involved in any way I can. Also to C. Grover for spending extra time helping me with some audio electronics questions. Awesome. Yes, audio. We're, we're also doing a lot of audio stuff, which is going to be very exciting as well. Um, cool. Thanks, Sedacious, and happy to have you in the weekly meeting here. Um, okay, Summersoft. Summersoft usually types in. Maybe busy. Uh, I will say, <laughs> I'll scoop Summersoft. Uh, Summersoft put in the notes already. Uh, thanks to Tan Newt and me for the PR review and a group hug. <laughs> All right. I scooped you. I beat you. Beat you to it. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. That was Hog Reports. Um, happens every week. If you're listening to this later um, and you can never make the meeting, you, everyone is always free. You can email me or you can at me on Discord and I will read off Hug Reports and status updates in the meeting even if you can't make it. So um, just a note for that. Um, okay, that's status updates. Okay, perfect. Um, let me take a time code again and keep going. So status updates uh, is a chance for you to just talk a little bit about what you're working on, whether it's a project that you're doing with CircuitPython, a bathroom remodel like Jerry has done, or a core CircuitPython work like Dan and Katni and I tend to do. Um, that's all totally welcome. We wanna hear what you're working on. We wanna hear what is interesting. And then um, that's kind of in two phases. We talk about what we've been working on previously and what we plan on working in the coming weeks. So. Um, I'll take a time code and get started for myself. I, I was like scrolling down uh, to see the notes that I had written for myself, which I failed to do last night. So um, what was I doing? Last week I was working on uh, getting the display IO stuff that's checked in. Uh, it's it's specific to the Halloween right now and, ha where, and in particular a board that has a built-in display. Um, and so I'm working on reorganizing a little bit about how displays are initialized so that we can, um, so that any board like a Metro can be hooked up to a display and used uh, appropriately. The tricky part, the trickier part about that is, is that I want it to work where if you initialize a display, um, that first display that you initialize will actually be used kind of outside the VM as well. So if you have an error in circuit python it'll actually show you that error after your code stops running in the same way that we have a status led flashing the error codes i want to if we have a display we should use it and we should use it well um so there's some lifetime stuff around that that gets a little bit more tricky uh so i've been working on that um i have been working on my game boy stuff a little bit 
um, I was really digging into getting the uh, the cartridge that I made working on the Game Boy Color, um, but that's tricky and I haven't managed to do it. So I'm kind of hoping to circle back and getting the the Game Boy Pocket working with the cartridge. Um, but uh, going forward to this week, I go to New York on Thursday. So Thursday is kind of a wash. And then um, Friday we'll be in New York in Adafruit HQ. And we'll be at Make Your Fair on Saturday and Sunday. So today I want to figure out kind of what, when we're going to be at Make Your Fair so we can meet up with people. So if you are going to be at World Make Your Fair, um, hop on Discord, ping me, and I'll add you to the World Make Your Fair role so that you can get other pings about what we're going to do. I'm thinking right now we'll actually just meet everybody at the DigiKey booth at 11 a.m. both days, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, because a lot of the uh, kind of talks and stuff that I'd want to go to would be in the afternoon. And talks are actually not a bad thing to do in the afternoon as well because it gets hotter uh, in the afternoon potentially. So that is good to know. So reach out if you're going to um, reach out if you're going to Maker Fair. Um, what I'm planning on doing before I get to New York is um, I, I would like to get to, to a PR for this display. Uh, display stuff, but we will see. Uh, I also have to do the newsletter uh, this afternoon as well. And then we're gone. Uh, I get back to Seattle on a week from Friday. So I'm gone just over a week. Uh, we will also be at the Open Hardware Summit. Uh, we'll, we'll be in Boston starting on Tuesday. So if you are in Boston, you could reach out to us as well. Uh, we'll be at the Open Hardware Summit. So uh, next week will be kind of a code wash depending on, on what we're doing, but, uh, we'll do lots of other stuff too. So, okay. Um, that's my status updates and I rambled on about it, but let's go to Carter. Oh, unmute the mic first. Um, <laughs> good job. A, uh, a cornucopia of various small things, uh, related to basically the same thing I did in the hug report. So basically I wrapped up a bunch of small fixes to the HT 16K 33 stuff that I found helping someone out in Discord. And I just fired up a bunch of issues and just went through a bunch of PRs to do them. No big deal there. And then the LSM9 DS01 name change stuff, which is also a pretty simple thing. But it looks like uh, there was some copy pasta stuff that someone posted an issue on. So there's still some a small outstanding issue there. I'll go back and fix. Mm. Uh, it was it was in there prior to that. It was kind of weird. I thought maybe I'd broken it, but I, it was it was in there all along. So I think just having updated stuff made someone use it and point out the issue. Right. Pretty pretty simple. It'll just go fix it. And then uh, the refactor of the PN five three two NFC stuff. We got that done. It looks like today ish or some point that happened. Mm -hmm. So that was that was basically just a text editor exercise and in, inputting stuff into separate files for memory efficiency. Right. And now the real work needs to be done to kind of like adding some app property stuff so that the mm -hmm. interface becomes more more circuit Python y. Yeah. So that'll be what's next there. Yeah. Uh, NPR one twenty one capacitive touch. I found an old uh, mention where you were kind of suggesting an interface change and i yep. resurrected that whole discussion and that's <laughs> been good and signed up few, to do work yeah signed up for it and but also it was good to have uh the discussion that's been happening so exactly yep. knowing what we're actually going to be doing there in terms of the interface change and that looks like today was very active and has kind of kind of reached a uh, a final conclusion so know what mm -hmm. to do there and then also I was playing this weekend with something related to the uh, TCS uh, RGB light sensor. Okay. And first time I've ever used that library in CircuitPython and kind of found some weirdness with that library and okay. created a bunch of issues okay. in that repo also. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking a look at those APIs. It's, it's really handy because I haven't had a ton of time to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was just kind of a matter of coming across them by using it. I self-assigned them, but if anyone else wants to, Go take a look at them, please do. Yeah, in general, when it comes to assignment, I only assign them to myself if I'm actively working on them. Uh, otherwise, I, I won't do that. But that tends to be how I manage it. Um, OK, thanks, Carter. Uh, C. Grover. Are you around? 
been not a lot of circuit fun working on the past two weeks. Still being rocking recorded track to be incorporated in a song remake that's being produced overseas. Kind of exciting. Yeah, that does sound exciting. a long story to that I won't tell today. All right. Yeah, let's, let's just song in the... So anyway, um, I just submitted the front panel design uh, um, and make learning guide, and I hope it'll be out soon. Sounds like it will. Published this, I just uh, published a sneak peek of one of the... Pro um, also working on an analog meter fundamentals tutorial that may become a guide too, we'll see. And uh, I had to make some quick enhancements to a Eurorack control voltage monitor program that I wrote in CircuitPython late last night. And it's still amazing to me to, again, experience how facile CircuitPython is for adjusting and testing and releasing code. It's, it, mm -hmm. it's just easy. So, but next week it's back to your rack. Um, I'll be doing some synth PCB assembly and circuit Python coding. And so I may have something circuit Python ish to talk about soon. It looks amazing. That front panel looks awesome. Yeah. That's a sticker. That's a sticker. Yeah. With the LEDs mounted behind it. So the, ah. the learning guide, um, will document how to do that. Cool. Yeah. That looks very cool. I want, I really want a, a feather wing that has just a knob and stuff on it. But I guess to be panel mounted, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I want to know well, how I'm, to do that stuff. I'm addicted to panel mounting things, but, um, you know, I like to have my electronics inside where I don't uh, pull a wire out accidentally. And, right. You know. Cool. I look forward to that. That looks neat. All right, Charles. Well, I've got a small status report on my uh, electronic ocarina. I've got the uh, the uh, breath controller working. Mm. So it now outputs bre uh, continuous breath uh, m uh, breath uh, volume control. Hmm. That's as far as I've gotten so far. But the next trick is to create the switches so I can... The switch matrix so I can... Uh, you know, the fingering right. uh, fun and games. Uh, so that's where I am. And I, I may need some help getting the uh, the MIDI interface working working because I'm still having that baud rate problem on mm -hmm. the uh, Raspberry Pi. I may wind up going to a uh, Metro M4 mm -hmm. instead. All right, well, keep us posted and post pictures as you have them too. It sounds really interesting. Okay. Thanks, Charles. Um, all right, Dakota, do you want to actually do your report? I know you put them in the docs. I can if you can hear me. I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I threw the notes in because with my memory, I can't even remember what I'm talking about I, most of the time. I can relate. <laughs> um, basically, I've been trying to climb out of the chaos. It is my life. Um, I finished reading the Tolerby uh, MicroPython book. Uh, recommended by the way mm -hmm. um, I'm building a parts storage cabinet to try and put away all the stuff I've bought lately so that mm -hmm. I can actually start using some of it uh, using baking pans and oak stair treads um, mm -hmm. I'll try to post a learn guide for that <laughs> when it's done because it's uh, it's very useful if I can get it done yeah interesting uh, and then I've been working on a uh, the big project uh, in the background which is the synthesizer design uh, using a, a couple of feathers uh, a kind of nice piano style uh, uh, controller keys uh, hmm. and uh, incorporating some of the MIDI solenoid drum stuff that I've been seeing posted. By oh, yeah. The Colin did. Cool. Thanks, Dakota. All Thank right. you. All right, Dan. Hi. So, um, as you mentioned, I finished, I released uh, sort of Python 302, which had some necessary fixes and also a few enhancements to UART. And um, the next thing to do is to merge those changes into master so we can do a 4.0 alpha, which has some, some necessary fixes in it. Mm -hmm. And then I've been mostly working on NRF52 peripherals. There's a lot to do. There's like a dozen things to do <laughs> and just churning that out. So, but we hope to get like all the bus IO done soon on nrf 52 and then start adding the more esoteric peripherals right okay cool uh great job on that 
you're you are definitely thank you definitely getting stuff done all right uh the shippu uh okay so i've been uh i've been mostly working on uh continuing to work on the ppo standalone version mm -hmm. and uh, also preparing for the maker fair so i made this uh, thing where i control a robot arm with the pew pew mm -hmm. read some image of that uh unfortunately i didn't have time to properly program it so people didn't get to control the robots at the main mm -hmm. fair. but I, I i could at least demonstrate that you can connect things to it uh also i got a final quote from, from the factory so i can confirm i will be selling them for ten dollars mm. a piece awesome. so uh kids of course uh the display and the battery will be separate and mm. sold it. and uh, i also prepared a final like a stable version of the firmware based on the uh, on a stable release of liquid python because previously it was all done on master and that's probably not very good for, for <laughs> uh, <laughs> releasing it with uh, for people, so so I backported it all to three, okay, uh, to to version three, and uh, now I have a table firmware. Mm -hmm. so that one. I still need to release a firmware version with Circuit Python 3.0 for for micro game. That still requires some more work. Okay. That's it. Um, and that was Zurich Maker Fair. Yes, that was the story. Sorry, we also got uh, some testing of the physical design in the way because there were always uh, a bunch of kids <laughs> around the table and they were playing and they were fighting for it. So the, the fact that it survived without any damage uh, confirms that the design is quite good. Yeah, <laughs> great job. It looked like they were having fun. I saw the saw the picture earlier. All right. Thanks to Shibu. Uh, all right, Jerry. Uh, yeah, except other than uh, playing a little bit with the with the dongle, um, finally got some new ones in this week. <laughs> Repair and, and <laughs> much better uh, set of headers on so I can access them. Um, so that, that's been working nicely and looking forward to getting back to playing with that. But spent most of the last several days um, putting together um, a little robotic arm kit that I've had. It's, it's, it's not, not a circuit Python thing right now. It, it could be, but um, mm -hmm. it, um, I'm actually using a, a M0 Wink board. WNC board to uh, to drive it um, and um, using a, a cricket and um, it's been, been a lot of fun and uh, and then switching over to a, another another system that has a that one has four servos and it 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 it, it was a mixed success the the, the motors aren't, aren't very good that came with the kit so it's, it's it struggles to lift mm. its own weight mm. but uh but it was fun. And then I'm doing the same. I have another another robotic arm that uses six little DC motors. And so I'm hooking up a uh, with a between a cricket and a and a motor shield trying to drive those. Right. So all, all using all using Adafruit IO as the interface. So cool. So not too much circuit Python stuff this week. Hey, no no problem. That robotic stuff is super interesting as well. All right, uh Katni. So I have been in Italy for three and a half weeks and I have gotten rough. nothing done. I know it was so difficult, um, but I didn't do any work. So uh, the so nothing to report for the past, but um, upcoming, uh, the next few days are basic catch up. It's just, uh, you know, essentially taking a look at what is upcoming. Um, the plan is to get back into the PyPI stuff and more library work. Um, but the plan is not to have that happen this week. So we will be just slowly spinning me back up. Um, I want to talk to Carter at some point about the library work that uh, he's been doing and make sure we get um, any kind of changes there or anything that needs to be added to PyPI um, noted so we know where to do with that. Um, so Carter, if at some point um, in the next couple of days you have time, it'd be good to chat. Um, other than that, I'm leaving Thursday for New York. Mm -hmm. um, so as you said, uh, Thursday is kind of a wash. Um, and But the nice thing is we will be in person, so it should be easier to get 
the the last bit of spun up um since we're all in the same place and you know be able to work on whatever um this weekend i will also be at maker fair so uh whatever plans um scott ends up putting in place um i will also be present for those um and then the same on thursday i will be at open hardware summit um so that's and i will also be returning a week from friday um so what friday and sunday will be at uh or friday and monday rather will be at adafruit hq yep. um working on uh the stuff we talked about so mm -hmm. um looking forward to that um and that is is basically my report awesome and i should say that uh i think we'll I think we'll try to do the weekly meeting next week on Monday from HQ. Uh, but if we can't figure that out, I may I may just drop it and we'll do it the next week once we're all back at home. So just a heads up for everybody. Um, and uh, we usually, it, if we do change it, it goes in the CircuitPython text channel on Discord and uh, we ping at CircuitPython helpers. So if you do want to know stuff about the meeting and aren't, Actually, I should add Charles. Um, if you want to get pinged about meeting updates and you're not uh, purple because you're in CircuitPython Helpers, uh, let us know and we'll add you just so that you get that info. Um, OK, uh, Scott, uh, SDW, you want to go? You were super. <laughs> You're super loud. Doesn't sound like a thing. Alright, he's just gonna type it. Hopefully nobody had it turned up really loud. Okay, uh, I'll read Mike's update because he, I thought Mike was lurking, but he's not. Um, Mike says, current activities is Maker Fair Sunday talk at noon uh, in zone three near the DigiKey booth. Uh, updates to the, and then uh, updating the intro to Cricket and make it move guides to include CircuitPython and make code, uh, which incorporates new products. <laughs> Dakota says that Scott's mic was interference from the Vogon construction fleet. Yeah. All right. And then Sedacious, do you want, or I guess you have a mic. Do you want to go Sedacious? I guess you were also text only. Uh, all right, Sedacious update is assembled and tested the first version of my battery-powered circuit Python board uh, pictured that runs off AA using a boost converter. I found plenty of things to fix, but the concept is pretty promising. There are four running dot stars molded into the toys my wife sculpts and casts. Oh, these are for running dot stars molded into the toys my wife sculpts and casts. That sounds super cool. Um, sculpted and casted toys. It says uh, also... I have another CircuitPython board on the way for the Hackaday square inch thing, and hopefully I'll be sending out yet another M4 board that Scott suggested that is possibly my most dense board so far. Uh, as an aside, I'm not happy with the micro USB socket I've been using, which is an Amphenol uh, DigiKey link here. Uh, so if anyone has one they really like for strength and insert and remove force, please let me know. Um, also, so that someone can call me on it later, I'll say here that I'm planning on writing a guide slash article on how to mash up Adafruit or other open source boards into custom designs, which sounds like a great, great idea for a project. Sweet. Um, okay, and so Scott says, uh, let me change this time code. Um, uh, I did some beta testing on the micro, micro bit web editors. It's great that they exist for situations where you don't have something better to use, but there are definitely better options. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, Summersoft. It 
says uh, frequency in. I started working on the ultra low power 32k oscillator G clock source for TPLL1. Uh, since non sync enabling of a G clock generator is only available in SAMD51, and I wanted to make TPLL1 available to any future use anyway, I started to move all of that out of frequency in over to clocks.c. Uh, but that is a fair amount of inner engineering thought process that I didn't anticipate. Uh, definitely open to thoughts and suggestions. Um, the VM VEML 6070 now matches the VEML 6075 usage to max possible extent, which is awesome. Standardizing APIs is always really great. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, non CircuitPython related, spent the weekend setting up the the laptop with dual boot Ubuntu Bionic. Um, hope to get to a point to help out with dev slash user support on that platform at, and well, because penguin and then penguin emoji. Um, all right. And that is it for the status updates. I will have to write my own notes, but I will do that. Um, Let's move on to the discussion slash in the weeds section. I did just see one go by, so we'll start with you, uh, Deshipu, after I intro it. Uh, so this is uh, a chance for us to just talk in general about um, any longer form, maybe maybe more technically uh, minded or, or technically detailed uh, discussions, but it can also just be like, I had this project and I, I need an opinion about something. So um, if you're... If you've got topics, please put them in the text channel um, and we'll go through that. So uh, Radomir uh, Deshipu was the first person to do that. So we'll start with uh, Deshipu. Do you want to uh, talk about what you're thinking? Uh, sure. I I think I, I was mentioning that uh, maybe a half a year ago already, but uh, uh, as, as we we have more boards, uh, more board definitions. Mm -hmm. Story, maybe it will be a good idea to to find a way of defining what modules are enabled uh, mm -hmm. in uh, for a particular board in the board definition itself instead of in the mpconfig.h uh, uh, right. file. Especially since then, uh, so I I have two motivations for that. Right now, that there is basically two the two lists of modules for the uh, for the uh, boards with extra flash and for the boards without the extra flash, and there is one special case for the peer key mm -hmm. uh, board. And uh, I, I suppose uh, the the way to add your own board that has special needs would be to add the, more of those special cases. Right. But that doesn't really scale very well. Yep. And uh, the second thing is, uh, I have some boards that uh, I don't, I, I'm not really ready to, to merge into the main repository. Uh, Why not? And I keep the, the, the board definition in a separate repository that is related to that particular board where the board designs are and so on and so on. Is that is that because there's extra custom code that goes with it? Uh, that's partially it, but also also the uh, it, it's not ready yet it's it's a you know it's not a final version and i don't want to make up request every time i i release a new version of the design well we we wouldn't <coughs> mind if you did that but okay. that's up to you but it, it it doesn't feel clean so so i i prefer to keep the board definition in a separate repository with the board itself yeah, and then I need to also have some div file for the MP config board mm -hmm. page. Yeah, and that also doesn't work well as as the code evolves and the div doesn't apply cleanly anymore, and so on, so on. So I I was wondering that maybe we could have an explicit list in the uh, uh, MP board .h mm -hmm. uh, somehow. Because I, I know it's not being included everywhere where MP config uh, right. port H is being included. So maybe even a separate file like modules.h or something like that. Yeah, uh, I, in the port. I mean, my thought is that it's definitely something we should figure out. I think Dan, I think there, 
I think there might be an issue for it actually. Um, but I, I might have created one. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, I don't feel like I've seen a good option. Like I, I don't feel like I've seen. Okay. So, like... so I, I will, I will create it. I will either find uh, that issue and commit on it or create a new one. Maybe. Okay. We can then continue the discussion there. Okay. Yeah, that would be good. Um, it's definitely something that we sh like if we have a good if we come up with a good way to do it, like I'm all for uh, making it better. One thing I think I realized when I was doing the tech stuff is that the way that we do it right now, where uh, we basically add it or not don't add it to the like global modules list is um, we have problems. We end up calling like init methods sometimes, but also I think we're including a bunch of Q strings we don't actually need. So um, yeah. So when when I add any optional modules, I always try to add those gaps in yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, always have the module define a, a gap and, and so on. Maybe. Right. Maybe that would be a better way, actually, instead of having a list, just have gaps for every module that is optional. Yeah. I mean, we've started to do that with I squared C slave. And display IO as well. So yeah, maybe just standardizing on that is okay. Okay. Well, well I will create the issue and we can discuss it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Um, okay. Let me take a time code and Charles can talk about the NPR 12 stuff. Yeah. The uh, reason I bring this particular item up, uh, somebody mentioned it back up in the back up in the status reports, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, it would be perfect for my project because I, the thing has twelve holes and mm -hmm. have twelve sense pads. I could make the fingering configuration a little easier that way. Right. <laughs> That's why I'm really interested, and also if the inner if the uh, circuit python has a way to control the sensitivity of the pads it would be uh, a great lot of help right um that's really, that's really what i'm i interested. think we have a setting for that at least for the normal uh, touch on the right on the right uh, the, i remember there was a method for setting the, the threshold at which it triggers Yep. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Because uh, the keys are fairly close to have to be fairly close together because you've got basically four fingers and then the fifth thing, your thumb is underneath. Okay, and one, one uh, finger on each side has two pads to deal with. And they're very close together. And that's the one area I'm sort of uh, wondering if it's going to work. Touch you touch is going to work yeah uh, a ground a ground plane between them could help also if you mm -hmm. have if you are worried about the hunt you could have a ground plane under yeah and grounded okay so that they don't intermix okay that's that's a good piece of information because i do have to de design a circuit board for the key key uh system so that will that will help me a lot Perfect. And Carter sent a, a reference link for you as well. Yes, I noticed. Sweet. Thank you. Thanks, Charles. Uh, any yes, other? Uh, 121. That's why I couldn't remember the name <laughs> of the uh, chip. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. That'll help. Perfect. Um, okay, anything else? I'm trying to think. All right, I didn't see anything. I'll take a time code and wrap us up. Um, as always, uh, thank you to everyone who was able to make the meeting. Thank you to everybody who listens to the meeting after the fact. We appreciate you too. Um, again, congrats to everybody for making this uh, successful enough that it has gone on a full year. I think we only missed a couple weeks, so uh, it's been really great. Um, don't expect to make every week, which is good or which would be really hard. Um, 
for those of you who are listening, uh, not live, but pre-recorded, if you do want to listen live, uh, we meet uh, on Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on our Discord channel. Um, even if you can't make the time, uh, we'd love it if you stopped by on our Discord uh, text channel and say hi, say thank you for the meeting, which would be cool. Um, and that to join that, you go to the URL adafru.it slash Discord. And that's our short link that will get you in there. Um, and uh, the link to this goes out in the Adafruit uh python for microcontrollers newsletter that goes out every week on tuesday mornings uh, if you want to join that newsletter you can go to adafruitdaily.com and sign up there even though it's called adafruit daily it is actually weekly so don't, don't expect me to do us to work on it every day that would be kind of crazy um but yeah so the the link to the recording goes there along with um a links to all sorts of other python related stuff c python uh, circuit python and uh, micro python related stuff um, updated learn guides around those things as well so uh, check that out um, i think that's it so uh, next week we should be uh, normal time from adafruit hq if we can't work that out because we had a crazy weekend or something i'll post in the text channel and then we'll just do the week after so two weeks from today um but otherwise, uh, keep us posted. If you're going to Maker Four Air or the op- and or the Open Hardware Summit, let us know. We'd love to meet up with you in person, um, and again, coordinate with us on Discord for that. So, uh, thank you everybody for a great meeting today and a great year of meetings and community and all that. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>